Okay, excellent. All right, guys. Uh, thanks for joining. Um, I wanted to have this meeting uh, because I've been uh, so uh, the bees do various things, but I'm I'm shifting our focus really primarily to translations. I think uh, this is uh, I have a plan uh, that I've been working on that I want to share with you guys, and uh, you know I just want to get everyone's updates, and I, I have some just questions going through the process. Um, but before we get into it, uh, does uh, any Doug or Ryan, do you have anything you want to share in the start? Nothing on my mind. Yeah, no, all good. Okay. So, um, we, the bees would like to submit a proposal to the ENF grant framework ASAP. And what my current thinking is that um, the stuff that uh, Ryan, um, that you can help us with, and you know, you made a great flow chart that we can talk a little bit about later. I think that would be better um, not right away, like next quarter. Um, once we, if we can get in a, so first I wanna see whether the ENF agrees with the plan that I'm gonna share with you in just a second. If they agree to that, we'll be doing a lot of translation work. And then um, we can further justify, we can find um, issues and inefficiencies while we're doing that work and say, okay, here's the things that we need. And then we can um, help pitch, help you guys with, with the pitch to ENF like next quarter is what I'm thinking. Um, so let me just uh, quickly describe the, uh, the plan that we have in mind. So um, there's a lot of uh, EOS public good content out there, especially video content. This in our previous meeting. And so the, the plan would be to, um, I just got a message and my connection is unstable. So let me know if I'm breaking up. Um, you have a piece of content. We can grab the broken English that comes from the automated subtitles for that content. Um, the, so I've been playing around with this and there's the, the format that those subtitles or the, that text um, comes from are like two lines each, like two lines, two lines, it's subtitle format. And um, the, the English hive would go in and clean up that English, but I'm thinking of, having them do two types of documents. One is in subtitle format, and the other is in transcript or article format, where Jesse says something, Ryan says something, Doug says something. So we identify the speaker, and the, the um, output of that content would be an article with the video of, in the language with the, with the subtitles uploaded so we have, we're gonna have our custom subtitles uploaded into the YouTube and then have the transcript uh, below that. And that would be um, a, like a content for all the uh, hives that translate that. Um, then what we're gonna do is tweet out that uh, link to that content. We're gonna swarm it. So we have this uh, unique capability with the bees called swarming where the bees are automatically compensated for retweeting a tweet. We're gonna swarm it. Then we're going to use a uh, Twitter ad. We're going to uh, boost it with Twitter ads. And the, the purpose and idea behind the Twitter ad is to build a retargeting audience for the EOS community. So when someone clicks on that ad, uh, there's a Twitter code snippet that it saves the people that land on the website. And these are people that are not necessarily in the EOS community because we're going to, we're going to, um, advertise to crypto in general, blockchain in general, people on, on Twitter. It's going to um, build a list of warm leads, as we say, in a digital ad space. So then- Yeah, that's pretty good. Then the, the bees will be, um, if we're funded, subsidized by the ENF, any, any Palmelo approved project, any project, 
that's Pomelo approved, that's a public good, could leverage that custom, it's called a custom audience that you build on Twitter ads, of these warm leads. They can leverage that custom audience to convert Twitter users into users of their application if you're a public good on EOS. So I think that would provide a lot of value to the EOS community. So that's the plan we're going to be pitching to the ENF ASAP. I want to do this by the end of the month. We're really trying to go hard on this. Uh, do you guys have any um, feedback on that plan? Um, yeah, I think that remarketing is um, brilliant, especially for the EOS uh, ecosystem. So you guys are going to compound on on that list. Um, so it's really cool. I think it's it's brilliant. And then the language issue of that remarketing is is the last little tail end issue, and that is that you don't have to worry about um, you know maybe that uh, Twitter user not being able to understand because you're solving that at the same time. So it really the marketing's value is really extended to its max there. So I think it's pretty cool. Um, it's it, it's going to be uh, a bit of a challenge, I think, just uh, for, you know, how you present this and where you present this, I suppose. But uh, I think ultimately um, you really are, you're going to appeal to whoever you're pitching this to because, yeah, it's a brilliant uh, little marketing uh, cycle. Can you elaborate more on um, how to present it and where to present it? So let me just reiterate what I'm what I'm thinking with that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we have Bywire News. It's an EOS uh, news website. Yes. They're willing to put the Twitter tracking code snippet on their website, so um, okay. we can we can post on their website. And the actual piece of content, and maybe you disagree that this is the best way to do it, but I, I envision having the embedded YouTube video with, um, and I want to talk a little bit more about how exactly the subtitles are displayed there. If you up, so maybe I'll just ask right now, if you upload a custom subtitles into the YouTube studio, um, you still have to click on the closed captioning button to display those subtitles. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. So we'd have to but, put, you know, the, oh, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. There is, an, there, there is a, pr a probability, and we need to maybe make a note of this just to check it. I mean, it wouldn't take – let me just open a quick note here. There's a probability that the user that's, let's say, in Portugal, for example, is watching the YouTube video, and the subtitles are prompted for him to use them because he's in Portugal. There is a probability that that will happen automatically. But worst-case scenario, there are two things. You've got to turn on subtitles. That is a feature on, on YouTube. Right. And if you do turn it on – then you get the, the automated feature. But it would be good to know, especially in your pitch, that once this is translated properly and you've taken the time to put up a subtitle file and you note this on your pitch that it automatically is in Portuguese in Portugal, that's a win for you. So we need to know that. So I'm going to just put that out as a little quick note. We must check that and we must test that. Yes. It's basically, you know, test the auto uh, subtitle feature. But But it's not... But it's not auto subtitles because we're we're uploading a custom SRT file in there. Sorry, so, when I say auto, <coughs> I mean that I'm in Portugal. I watch the video and it's automatically giving me Portuguese without me having to look for the fact that this video is in Portuguese because that value is lost to that person. He's he doesn't know that it's in Portuguese unless he goes. And I'd like to. It's a good question. I need to just check that. But um, yes, of course, it would be a custom file but usb's taking the time to get it right um right. and on I, the the youtube channel i um i want to interject here uh i forgot to look into that about whether or not we can en enable closed captioning by default and i just googled it and there appears to be some tag that can be added and i haven't tested it so i'll go ahead and test that to, to figure that out um no one of the things that yes, you're please. talking about jesse okay. is something that is on my mind because this has to do with the new standard of VTT over SRT, because technically SRT is being deprecated and VTT is a new HTML5 standard. Now, if you compare VTT to SRT, it's almost the same, but VTT allows for extra features that SRT does not, things like formatting, okay. um, but more importantly, who the speaker is. So if there's uh, more than one speaker, multiple speakers, VTT can attribute 
the the dialogue to a person you know like mark this and so this is what you're talking about with transcript essentially right because a transcript yeah. you're, right. you're you want to identify who the speakers are right so in that process of captioning okay there yeah. is a thing called diarization okay and i don't know anything about it except i just came across it because I was looking into that deep gram stuff as an alternative for you, uh, Google or Google and Amazon's uh, voice to text captioning processes. And both of them seem to offer, all three of them seem to offer diarization, but I don't know exactly how that works. Like, the, can it identify the name of the speaker? Do you have to input that in somewhere? Um, so, Probably. It's so just that's like the timestamp. Yeah, that's something that we might want to, we don't, I, I think, I don't want to throw a curveball into, uh, you know, complexifying things, but we may want to keep, you know, or even open up that, that possibility, because, because I would hate to start, a, uh, start moving down a path and go, oh, you know, we should have thought about this, and this actually, there's a different way or a better way, and I don't even know anything about BTT, like, I haven't tried messing with any kind of BTT format and how that would work through, like, YouTube's editor, but I do know I, it, it lists it as a file format, I think, for download or upload. I remember. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. So I don't know exactly how that equation fits into what you're talking about, but it seems like it would lends towards what you want to do with the transcript. Now, the second you get into the transcript, where are you going to post it is the first question I have. Bywire. On Bywire. Bywire. Okay. And Bywire is not bad for getting exposure to content because it seems to have in my mind good seo links use you you'll say but it seems yes. to me that a lot of the reason why we're even you still using youtube and still using a lot of these third party you know kinds of deals is because of the large user base yeah you know yes. and so and so the thing is is that i find that uh like if you work, if you start putting that content on a domain name, say you didn't use Bywire, but you just built up your new, a new website, you might have problems getting indexing with that site over right. time, you know, it will take right. time to work. Whereas Bywire, you have some immediate gratification because you can benefit off the existing organic traffic there and they're getting a lot of, you know, more exposure and, you know, search engines and whatnot. Can but I, can I uh, go back to the v this VPT file for a second? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it sounds like, Doug, that we could have one file because of the VT, if the VTT, instead of having a subtitle, a subtitle document and a transcript document, it kind of sounds like the VTT file can give us both in one document. That's what I'm wondering. Yeah, I don't so know. That's, exactly that's how that huge. Yeah, that's that true. is. So I don't know, I don't know, uh, Ryan, where, what, what your thoughts on diarization, is, you know, have you, have you explored that at all with, uh, the language translation or identifying voices and not just the words, like who the speaker is. Yeah, absolutely. So for us, the, the way the content is delivered is, is not the, the issue. Our challenge is just to translate it. And then what is the issue is to give it back in this original format, like it's, it's structure. So if we translate a web page, the trick is just to give back the web page in its new structure. And the trick there is, is tricky because the content itself actually changes in terms of number of characters and positioning of those characters. But an SRT file is actually one of the simpler files mm -hmm. for us to work with. So I'm imagining that on our side, we would need a, a web editor that can handle VTT and make sure that the elements that are necessary to edit are easy to edit, easily identifiable. So when you look at an SRT, you can see sentence and you see the timestamp. So you've got very, very separate areas and simple areas to edit. I would imagine VTT will probably have the sentence, timestamp, uh, who's speaking and, and whatever other components are or features in that file. And we would, as developers, create a web interface that just make it simple to edit those areas. So I don't think it's, I think it's a nice um, ad addition. We could do both because depending on the author, there's a preference that we need to appeal to. Um, but I, it's, it is a cool uh, suggestion. So I've written it down. So the, the main thing I think is how is the original English file created and then it has to be massaged or whatever and then i don't know if the um online youtube uh subtitle editor allows for even btt like i haven't tried to see if it can like how it handles 
handles it. And if there needed to be like a, you know, back end modification to the native interface or something like that. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm, I'm just sort of curious work. about it. I hadn't really spent much time on it, but it just, it was something that came across that caught my interest. And now with Jesse talking about the transcription thing, I think it definitely probably should worth some more investigation into. Yeah, absolutely. I've written it down. That's a good point. Absolutely. Um, it wouldn't take long to just see what, what YouTube's allowing us to export right now anyway. Yeah, so I, that's where I, my next question was going to be. Yeah. Um, I was exploring um, export options from YouTube, and it didn't have the timestamps in it from what I was able to get. Like, if I, I am not a, an author of the YouTube channel, and the, the export that I was able to get did not have um, timestamps, is that an issue? That's well, I mean, have. that's good. That's going to be an issue because you were just copying and pasting right from the console where you yeah. share transcript. Yeah. So that's what I was going to say. It's not, it's not preserving SRT syntax. That's going to just be a, a walk. Uh, it's going to be a pain in the butt because uh, you have to have a certain file syntax that has the beginning uh, timestamp and the end timestamp and some like arrows or something like that. And when your cut and paste was just a visual uh, uh, thing from the YouTube. Uh, okay. You know, so how, how do we get the right syntax? How do we export from the YouTube? Down sub is the only way, the easiest way I can think of if you don't have access to the account. What does that mean? Down uh, sub? It's a website that I uh, I was, I think I put it in the link before. It's just a- uh, No, I it, thought I checked that website and it didn't have this, the syntax, I thought. Uh, I thought I tried- Can we check again? It. Let's, here, can you send the website again? Yeah, 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 uh, hold on. You should be able to download this, the SRT file preserved with it. Oh man. I, so I think you know I'm... what? I don't, this this website. Yeah, is... I, I went to that website. I also got that virus warning, by the way. Yeah, so there's what? a virus warning on that website. Yeah, wow. and you know what I think it is? I think it's a false positive right? because uh, it's got semi spammy kind of stuff. It's I don't know if it's actually, you know. Ryan. <laughs> Ryan, do you know of a, of a way, a better way to get the right syntax for the YouTube export? We're going to we're going to build that for you guys. So there's no we're other way. The you can build YouTube. a custom solution. There's there's a well, way. We we're not going to I'll be honest, we're not building a custom we're taking uh okay, so so our well, our first thing that we're going to do to get this done as soon as possible, we're going to use Google's APR and it's got a, a machine to do this. It takes the um, text out of any video. So using the link on YouTube, we're going to process it through Google's uh, API, and we're going to get that text, and then we're going to export it as an SRT file. So that that's, you know, we're going to try and make that as simple as possible. Um, but Right, but this is like I mentioned in the beginning of the call. Um, so let me yeah. give you a little, let me give you a little context here. So the bees are almost out of funding. We are going to die. Okay in about a month and a half if we do not get funding. So this is critical okay. that we need a manual process to do it first. And then right. we can automate it with you guys next quarter is okay. the plan. Then, then, a, then a manual process right now is why are, we not, why are we not using the author of the YouTube channel? Okay, so we need the author of the YouTube channel. We need the author who wants okay. this in 10 different languages to give us the exported generic SRT file. I see. Okay. So that's that. But it would be that's, a lot more that's convenient. That's the best way. Okay. Yeah. But, and then, now. and going back to what you were saying, Translate Me, we're going to pitch to the ENF for Translate Me to make the process more efficient. And how are we going to do that? We don't need to ask the author for the SRT file, number one. Number two, you're going to make it um, easier. Uh, you're you're going to um, have a platform, a dashboard, to make it easier to translate because you can watch the video at the same time when you translate. That's number two, right? Yep. And then um, well, there was the – what was the other thing? Oh, oh, um, and then the um, – um, the uh, uploading. So once once the, the translation's finished, to to uh, post it again, to yep. so you can get it. So um, it like, do you imagine it would like 
it, I, can you tell me more about that that last step will it generate a oh, new this is, link yeah so this is where and this is what we covered on our last call it, it a lot of what we can do is completely make this automated but the one part that we we can't do is, is retain some of the values so for example the author's value is that they have a channel they got a following so we need to get it back onto that channel more, more than likely and then place hold that on bar wire or wherever the case may be but yeah. i you know so the further we move away from not using the author the we might lose some bits and pieces we need to discuss that on, on this flow that, that we've done but in my head i i feel like it's 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 really about the author saying here's the file and give it back to me when it's done but give it right. to me in a way that i can use it easily and give it to me in a way that I, I can find it easily. So, you know, with you, you've got this middle piece that needs to be done, which is translating that file, making the file available to the translator, making it, uh, you know, simple for them to maybe do it, uh, making sure that they even understand what video they're doing this from, you know, because that English portion of the job is also important. And then once that's done, once the English portion is done, it doesn't need to be associated with any video, but maybe it does uh, for the VTT in terms of who's speaking, you know, we, we might have to look at that. But the in-between bit um, of getting it back to the author, that's kind of what I think we should focus on. And um, and making it really automated is costly. And also, um, your I think you might lose some of the value for you know the fact that it's not on the author's channel. So then we should stay on the author's side as much as okay. possible. Maybe we should work with an author to give us some you know specifics here. But the basics is let him give you the file push it to, I'm calling it EOS Marketplace right now, whatever the name is, or EOS B's Marketplace. And then it goes through to your B's. And then our job there, at the very least, make it easy for the EOS B's to work on this. Make it efficient for you to manage yeah. that. And then at the end, you get a file that's saved, which is the maybe the, you, the author can literally get it by you saying, here's the link, or um, you know, log in here. It could be a customer side to this, I'm not sure. Okay. So thank you for that. Um, I think I understand it a lot better now. But I, I, uh, um, if we can maybe talk a little bit more about how Translate Me can make it easier. And I know we've talked about this before, but if you just don't mind reiterating, again. yeah, no, that's what that's the point of this course. So let me just open the diagram quick. Yeah, I will uh, give you permission to. Or I can, I, yeah. I have it. I can share my screen. Um, hold on, let me find it. Uh, here it is. Let me, I just need to check a message real quick. Now, I think I should share because I, we might make some changes live on this and we yeah, can actually yeah. do that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna share my, sorry, I've just, distracted for a second yeah. here um can you see me can you see it <laughs> sorry excuse me um yeah we can i can see it um what i'd like to do is is um let me share mine with you let's go oh, to the live document one? yeah let me oh and then i want to show that. you something no no it's the same one it's the same one. Oh, it's the same one but uh yeah, it's the same one. And I'm going to send you a link now uh, quickly. I want you to open that in the meantime because I think it will be helpful um, for, to you to be able to see this. Um, so you can go to that link just now, not now, but and I'm going to send you the file. This is the working file. And it's very simple to use because it's a web, web platform. And okay, so that's just on Telegram. Let's leave that for now. Let me share my screen with you. Allow that on the cool if if i can okay let me try okay you've got to just have to make you a it. host first okay cool now make you me can host. Your screen. okay cool. hold on Good. let me i'll be right back give me give me a 10 seconds i need yep. to get to no problem i'm refilling my coffee <laughs> good <laughs> cow Okay. Okay. 
All right, I'm back. Okay. Can you guys see my screen? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So for the purpose of this call, you know, I, I really sat down and tried to th sort of look at this long term for you. So I'm going to remove, we're just going to focus on the videos for now, right? Right. Correct. Correct. Okay. So, so I've just done a double of this and I'm just going to. Right. I'll redo this next time. I think it's actually um, got to go down the page. Okay, so let's just let's just start with the fact that that where this begins is the, is the author. Okay, um, the author obviously you know creates a video. <clears throat> and this is what we've got to decide. Can we, shall we allow the author to submit it to your platform? You know, that's the question. Should, or, or, you know, how do you know what needs to be translated? Who, do, who notifies you? Is there, is there like a place? There's a conversation? Is it a group? You need to tell us what that is. But what I, what I think is best is that all authors know that there's this place that they can go where ELSBs can help them. Okay. Yes. And yes. that's the platform. So, so I've just called it that. And, and I just, I'm sort of allowing the, the author to say, hey, he has my SRT file. And, right. and that SRT file will be loaded specifically uh, by the author for the languages that he wants. I mean, that communication doesn't have to be duplicated. He can say, he has my SRT file, uh, I want um, 10 languages. Or you can say, look, by default, these are the ones that we work with. If you want all of them, you know, that's how it's gonna work or right. so, that part we need we can adjust on the UI. And what's what's great about this is that the document system does this already. It's already got this. So we kind of we this is done. Okay. Now when we get to the portal, you know, what does it do? And <clears throat> I noted something is I just said sorry, we're not recording um, anymore, I just realized. Because when I oh, when okay. I lost connection. Oh, okay. We want to start that up again. Yeah, uh sorry. Um I need to Let's take back post oh to record and then i got to give it back okay oh, now let me stop sharing recording. oh okay well that's yeah weird. yeah there's a little record little record button there okay all right so um so what i what Sorry i jotted down is just no no problem um so what I'm, what we've, what we've added here though is that in, in instead of the YouTuber um, submitting an SRT file, we've actually said the YouTuber would simply post their link. So, so we need to change that now. We need to change that because we don't want to go super complicated. We want to stay with what do we have available to us? Yes. yes. What works? And there's a little bit of flexibility in this that we want to help you guys, not just about the money. And we already have a whole lot of work that we've done. So let's get to as close as we can without worrying about money. And then after that, it, it probably will be better anyway in, in your final proposal. So yeah. we've got this platform. So now we're talking about, okay, video translation tools for creators to manage the SRT files and easily submit them to our machine translation AR to have ESBs improve the SRT file. So, I mean, <clears throat> SRT, let's just for, let's add that for now because we started talking about it. There's a VTT and there could be other files, okay? Um, then, well, you know, what? Let's, let's look at some of the flow. What can this guy do? So I said, create a dedicated account. The guy's got a sign Can we zoom in a little um, bit when you're- we Yeah, sure. Zoom in a little bit more. Cool. There we go, there we go. Is that better? Yeah. Yep. So, so obviously he's got to have an account. He's got to create an account. There's got to be a dashboard for him to see all his, um, you know, files. And I think for 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 viewing this right now, let's just open uh, Translate Your Market because because I mean you can see this straight away. So imagine the author's here. Uh -huh. uh, he wants to add his file. Now our we've suggested URL and automatically you get the SRT file. No, we're gonna add a document called SRT or we're gonna add a document called uh, VTT. Okay. And when we do that, we'll get an output, something that he can see, because we, we still want him to be able to at least have a look at this before he submits it to us, okay? 
um, once he's happy, and he doesn't necessarily have to edit the English, but he could. You know, we, we don't have to push everything to you guys. Um, and I think it's advisable that, that, that he does because it's in his interest to at least. Yeah, and and they, know, will. Us... they will. They will. You're right about that. Yeah. They will. Yeah. So. And, and yeah, we're, we can, a, we're a we reputable go... organization on EOS. Yeah. They will. They will do that. I, I, that's, I, I believe that. Um, so, so we're helping them translate this. Let them get us SRT file. Yeah. Pretty straightforward. Check the text. Check the, the time frame. But we will show that in a way that he can, you know, type what's necessary here and then change the time if necessary. But most of what he's going to be doing is checking that what he said is actually on this file. Okay. Well, and remember, wait, wait, Google's can also. Can I stop you there for a second? Yeah. Um, yes. About, about the changing the time. So, yeah. You're, can you elaborate that more? Like, are you saying that there's going to be a timestamp, a certain hours, minutes, and seconds? where it has a certain amount of text and that actual time is incorrect. Does that happen sometimes? It, it, it does. And I, I don't know if it's going to happen. I'm just saying, let's make sure that there's a UR that's similar to YouTube so that that can be changed so that you can't be stuck with, oh, I can't send this. I need to start again. Um, maybe 95% of the time it's never changed. Maybe, I, you know, so I think it's just going to well, be We'll find out when we do sure. it. Yeah, exactly. I, I just think that like how this is a document editor, there will be an SRT editor. And I know that my devs are not going to have an issue with allowing for the timestamps to show up just like it does on Google. So we'll, we'll familiarize that. And honestly, like I said, he probably more than likely would just be checking the English. And there might be even no necessary step for that. Because if we look at, um, you know, YouTube and we go into, uh, you know, the actual, Ed, you know, editing of this, it, it does already give you this option, okay? But there is one thing, yeah, though, um, Jesse, that I find very strange with, with Google, and that is that, uh, not with Google, with YouTube, is that the, the script is, is um, not automatically done if you don't, um, uh, you know, follow those steps that I did in that video yeah, from start. Because if you don't, then you end up with this. And this is basically, where's the file? Where's the English that I'm supposed to submit to ESPs? Right. And that, that is a problem. My, ex um, my experience is you have to, uh, you have to uh, duplicate <coughs> auto caption yep. thing. Sorry, guys. Wait, one second. Sorry. What, what video are you? Sorry, I've got such a bad throat infection and it's like just killing me. I think I'm talking too much, yeah? Yeah. Um, sorry, you're wait, saying- Wait, Brian, I got a question. I got a question. Uh, what video are you referencing? You said if you follow the video, my video, you made a video uh, a few, like yes. a week ago, right? Yeah, okay. I'll share that with you. Um, what I found is basically when you first upload a photo, I mean a video, You've got to select a few options and then you can get the English um, uh, uh, transcription. Okay. Yeah, but it, after you've uploaded it, there's just no way to get that. I've tried everything. Um, besides third-party software, which Doug's been playing with, YouTube does do it, but you've got to follow the initial steps when you upload this video. So it's going to be a problem for us steps? for... <clears throat> um, I'll share the video, <clears throat> the link now again. Um, uh, let me just, I think I do have, I'm using uh, this, yeah, wait, no, let me close that. It's on the YouTube channel, I mean, not YouTube, on Telegram, on the group, but I, I can get the video again. Yeah, I'm looking up in, I wanted... the, in the group. Um, yeah. So you posted it, Ryan, see. I assume, right? Uh... Yeah. Yeah. We, we do need to educate the guys on that because that that does help a lot it helps because we we have an existing srt file in english which is going to be easy to work with on our platform um i'm going I'm right to the top. i, I think not... i missed it where is this video it was right in the beginning when we first chatted so go right to the top oh um, really all the way okay there we go 
Yeah, there's there's a date. So I'm just oh, gonna ESB's reference again. quick automated review, review for text. Is that the one? I just said this one, and then I'm gonna open it on this. This one. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. let me. So I, I've just sure referenced it again. I save that and I watch it. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, so they so follow these steps and. Uh... Yeah, and we need to shorten that um, for the for the authors um, so that we can give them the option to automate that English and then okay. let, you it. know what's it, nice it. about that. Yeah. And then if they if they if they get that, then they should have I think it was this one. Let's have a look. Yeah. <clears throat> he has the automatic English. So I got this for free. Okay. From from the point of view that you know YouTube just did it for me. So if I go edit it, uh this will overwrite no cancel edit this one. This is the this is the one that they gave me. So, I mean, he could literally edit it here if he wanted to. If we didn't want to, you know, start off with too fancy, we could just tell him, give us the file. But either way, if we get the file and we want the ESPs to look at it and edit it, or we get the customer to edit it, it's the same thing. We're going to the make The customer is not going to edit it. There's no way. They're not going to want to do that. Sorry, the author, my bad. Not the it, customer, the author. It, it, it's the same thing. The author oh. will not go into his YouTube studio and edit this broken English. They they will not do that. That's why okay. is going to do it. Is that – so – so We need to ELS, download uh, the file. Okay. And who, who will do the editing, like an EOSB? The English hive of the EOSBs. Okay. All right. So then then let me, let me put that down here. If we're looking at this – He, but then the author will, at the very least, export that file. He has to. We need the he file. He has to download the file from, from, from YouTube yeah. Studio and send the it. The auto to English. Us. Yeah. And then for at the step dashboard to manage SRT files, create a new file. We're not going to copy a video right now. Okay. So we're going to say that's later. Let's just move that out the way. And we're just going to say um, import. Sorry. <clears throat> It's our T and it's VTT, yeah. So that's that's our new basic yes. step, which I think we we are much closer to doing. And funding wise, probably not even necessary. Okay, <clears throat> we'll just see how difficult this is and what's the manpower to just get that done. Then um, then this will automatically start by generating an original SRT file from the uh, uh, URL. We take that out and. We go straight to the next step, which is basically editing and viewing, allowing for the editing. Now, now we don't need that because the author is not going to do that. Um, and I, I just said I recommend that he do it, but I mean, you, you're saying it's not it's not going to happen. recommend man. the author manually add the caption file to YouTube to enable live editing of the file for alignment of sentences and segments of the actual video. I don't really understand that. We recommend the author manually add the caption file to YouTube to, in, to yeah, enable so, live editing. What does that so, mean? Sorry. Um, we recommend the author manually um, adds the caption file to YouTube to enable. Yeah, so, the SRT sorry, file? I'm just saying. Is that different from the Yeah, SRT I'm just file? saying. Well, I'm just saying that he needs to uh, upload this to YouTube, obviously, to his same uh, uh, YouTube uh, channel. But either way, the author's not going to. Uh, edit this thing. Okay, so let's skip that again. Um, after reviewed files have been changed, allow. Okay, so upload a new file and proceed with the platform's conver converted version. Submit to multi. Yeah. So, so that's that's gone. And what we're ending up with is the automated machine translation because we want that. No, no. There's done a step in between. There's a step. Okay. So what's that? Import SRT and then yeah. fix the English. English. Yes, you're right. Okay. Fix English uh, using English Hive. Yes. Okay, good. All right, got you. Uh, this file you'll you'll be able to actually just look at um, on that platform right, after I send it to you. Okay, so fixed English by English Hive. On what platform? So what platform are you talking about? I put it on, tele on Telegram for you. I sent it to you on Telegram personally. It's this link. And, it, and it's nice if you if you were familiar with this because you could later just look at this again, not in a static format. You could actually make some changes. Okay, 
Um, and it's very easy to use. Wait, I just I just want to. Um, I'm yep. gonna jump around in this video, this nine minute video that you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. I. You gonna watch that now? No, I'm just jumping around because I, I I still don't really understand what what you mean by this. Like you're talking what about the, a, the platform. So you're, you're talking about the YouTube platform. Um, no. What? Okay. Here we're going through the marketplace. Wait, where is being, where is the English high fixing the English? On what platform? On the marketplace. Going? On yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. So on your marketplace, on your platform. Yes. Got it. Okay. On on a version of this that you guys can use to collaborate. And that version, you're going to be able to watch the video and edit the SRT file at the same time. Yes, we can embed the video. Um, that's not so difficult to do or costly. And you can watch the video um, and have the timestamp and SRT file in a format that he can just make sure that it collaborates with that. OK. Um... So I think that so, is, so far I think, I think that, it's valuable that the author yeah. can have a, an account on your platform yes. to yes. upload these SRT files. Yeah, I think that's valuable. The okay, the um, the translation process, um, at least for the English hive, I don't see a lot of value add there because the English hive okay. can just have two tabs up: watch the video and edit the SRT file. But yeah. after that, I know we haven't gotten to the yet. Once the English Hive is done, then they can use the Translate Me platform to um, take that English and then use the Google AI API and then mm -hmm. have it in all the languages at one time. I could see some value add there. Yeah. And then I think you must come back to that English step though. And remember, if, you, if you're managing this in a way that's going to allow the author to create, you're going to be allowing 10 or 15 authors maybe to submit files. And if you're going right. to do that, you need to allow them to send it to the English half and let it right. wait there in a way that you can manage it. So I don't think there's any, any reason to take that step away from the platform. It must continue with the flow. And yes, we must no, make I, I'm, it not, I'm not suggesting that it should go away. I'm just, just okay. uh, I, I think I, I was just um, segmenting in my mind that the yeah. value there is more organization than the actual yes. translation work for the English. At hundred percent, it's leading up to it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. So, so I mean, it's basically this flow for now is from my side, you know, it's doable, and we can we can work towards this. Okay. So you've got your English, then you submit it to um, what is really multiple language models. Right. And that it will convert it into multiple files and you will end up with a dashboard for the author that is similar to this. Okay. And we will need to um, keep this sort of area for the author um, in somewhat, in some way active in terms of, you know, percentage completed or what is completed or exactly. you know, is it. Yes, that's is, great. That's yeah, great. So, so we'll come back to that, but essentially, um, it will come out in, in a dedicated URL for the SRL. Now we might not need that because that's more for the documents that we're working with. So right. um, we, we could we could you know come. So we don't we, we don't want a dedicated URL for each language. We just want a no. unique SRT file for each language that the author can yes. then upload to his content. Yeah. So. <clears throat> So when it's um, now you've got basically well, no, but it's by machine. Files. It's by machine and B review. Well, this is where we're going to get to now. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, yeah. never mind. Never mind. Okay, yeah. okay. So, so we've kind of got now this format that looks like this. Okay, uh, okay. These guys. got it, got it, got it. Okay. okay. Um, now it, it's important to segment this. He, I, I know that that he probably wants them all done, but we need the ability to be able to decide maybe. Maybe there's something wrong with the Chinese half at the moment, or I don't know, but we got to segment it. 
I agree. So that he's got separate I agree. files like that. So then, then he submits to human translator, select which language he submits. So he basically, you know, submits like this in this sort of fashion. Okay. And he does uh, each one. And and you're going to then can, have can you the do next that again? How, how does he yep. submit? Can you show me? Well, there's an example here on this uh, uh, demo where there's two that have not been submitted. So this would be allow you to oh, submit, submit it now. Oh, that's cool. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yeah. And and we would just use the same format. As I said, we've already got this working. Um, he can add some you know, deadlines. We've we've used. We're just going to use this. Um, so I then, have a, I have a question about that. Um, yeah. In terms of the time flow here, so when an mm. author comes on the platform, he uploads the English SRT file. Then the author has to wait until the English Hive takes care of it, mm. and then after the English Hive's done, the author must get a notification by email like the english Absolutely. should trigger that it's done and then the author needs to get a notification by email that you're ready your document is ready to uh, select your languages to translate to basically 100 percent. okay so notes um uh <clears throat> notification You get their emails, right? When they sign up to the platform? Yeah. All right. Okay. So, so yeah, there's a, there's a little step here in between. We need to let them know. We need to uh, maybe have the dashboard, give him some indication. Maybe we can put it in this, you know, this line uh, where this English waiting period, which we don't have now on this platform, we'd, you know, we'd have to make that, but there would be some indication here and when it's finished, yeah. He'd be notified. Okay, right. that's a good point. Okay. <clears throat> um, then coming back to uh, the human step, it will then go to the translators platform. Now, that that is uh, I'll show it to you quickly. Let's just log into that. It's basically the other side. Let's do my. Uh... So this is where the management of this starts to come together, and and here you know the translator will be in his own language able to see some of the jobs, maybe specifically only for them. You will be able to whitelist the translators that we as we spoke. There will be more than likely SRT files separated from maybe documents. You know I don't know, but essentially this is the dashboard where the the translators okay. will go through this step, uh, when they receive it. Um, job will be managed by ESBs. So there's a point. There's a point there too. So if you can go back yes. to the translator dashboard. Um, yes. Okay. The way the ESBs are set up is that each language has basically a manager, a translation manager, and then they okay. they have between two and five Bs, depending on the hive, that actually do the translator work. So we need a way for the the manager or what we call the princess B of each hive. We need a way for them to select which bees are going to be doing the translator work for, for the document. And if it's a really large document, we need a way for the princess B to select, okay, this, these three bees are going to work on this document and split it, you know, 33, 33, 33. And we need to make it really clear um, how much work. Is it Princess, Princess, Princess B? B? Princess B, right. Princess B to select which Bs work on the, the document, on the SRT file. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Will it be multiple? At the same time. What? Multiple bees working on the same file. If the princess chooses, yes. Ah. But we want we want to give them the option to like notify two bees on the Translate Me platform that for for the same document. We want that option. And if if one replies and one can't do it, then is the job given to one or can both do it? Both can do it. But let's say one bee is sick or something and can't do it. So that bee can decline the job 
And then the princess bee would get a notification that the job's been declined. And then the princess bee can maybe select a different bee to do the job or just have that one bee do the job. Do you understand what I mean? Okay. This, that complex, that does, com that does make it a little bit more complex in terms of um, the levels uh, and the, the settings that now the princess bee is going to create. So we have, you know, a, a different, let's say users, we've got a customer, translator, admin. These guys have different things that they no, can see. No, so the princess bee is an admin. Princess bee is an admin. Okay, princess bee is an admin. So, so there's got to be okay. multiple admins on maybe one account. Is that possible? Yeah, it, well, it's possible. I just want to stay... I want to get to functional without the necessity for funding. So let me just say uh, uh, multiple admins, and that would actually be princess, of course, for each language anyway. But it will be right. more of an admin account. Um, I think we need to come back to this specifically so that we can you know, not, not get that wrong. But I've got it in this file. So as we go, we need okay. to come back to what's the most economic way to get this SLT file but to have some management by the princess, okay? Yes. All right. Um, so this is pretty much the same uh, steps. There is a review step. I'm not sure if the author needs to review, but it does. It does have that ability for them to talk to each other. We could take that out if it's not. No, necessary. no. I think I think that should be there. Um, at okay. least uh, the author. Yeah, that's fine. The author should be should have the option to review the English file before yes, before it gets sent for, to translation okay then that's back here yes so it's done the um, english is done and the author should have a chance to review it um okay and approve it before it goes to translation So that's, well, I'll need to this up later, but that's fine. Okay, cool. Um, then we come in. So uh, let's just read. Yeah, content is translated and displayed. You can delete the dashboard. You can delete the completed work is reviewed by author, the original. In the, in this, the flow. This one. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Accepts it. You know. That's kind of the same thing, isn't it? Author accepts work as complete and request review. No. Well, no. Well, there. right there, the author needs to accept the work as complete. Um, okay. In so terms of the just, the payments. Ah, uh, yes. It's done. I'm happy. Click a button. Yes. Okay. Content is translated and displayed in the dashboard as human translated version of the SRF file. So basically the file's done and as they're done they will show up here as translated and our UR or rather the features for that is already built in um I just want to find one let's do this one don't know why they're not opening now that's weird the whole page is frozen oh uh, so I logged out. I was logged in as a translator. So I just, yeah, I think what we did here is we just said, okay, um, once it's done, there was an option to show that it's been translated. But here it's, oh, that's in review. I think it was, <clears throat> yeah. So it automatically switches to human uh, version and it's just indicating that it had been translated by a human and then it's obviously shown as done. And as they get done, maybe we send out emails, notifications, that sort of thing. Yes. And there'll be a progress bar or something to show that the whole job is done for those languages. <coughs> okay. All right, cool. So, and, and just in general, it, I, I know this is like a maybe a cosmetic, a cosmetic extra feature just to have like yeah. a timeline on top of the of the author's profile or like a web a dashboard where it says for yes. each job like because we have it's english and then it's machine and then it's uh, then it's it's uh, sorry sorry english human then machine 
and then trans and then all the other languages human to complete that should have like maybe a a a, a time bar completion indicator yes and and okay all right so like those little features i think we can we can tweak um but what i'm looking at here is a much simpler um uh, sort of flow of the author giving us the file us being able to use the file on our on the platform english is done then it goes to the the ESBs. There's a little tweak now for the princess uh, to be able to manage some of that. Yeah. That might that, may, that mean that may sorry that may need to be in version one, the princess manager. Yeah. Like. Yeah. Well. Uh, yeah. Well, you've designed it that way, so we will mold it that way. I mean, that's how you work. So we will, right. um, you know, look at that as as a feature that needs to be looked at. So let me take this back to um, my devs and my team and just get a get us get a view in on like what's the complexity in changing some of this stuff, especially the princess B, but the rest is very, um, let's say already done. You know, a yeah. lot of the stuff that we want to do um, is already in a, in a format where instead of it being an SRT file, we've got it for a document. And instead of it being a document, we need to just add the steps where it's necessary to say, okay, now it's an SRT file. So it's a little bit different. Right. And this English review step is a little different. So we, but it's it's a matter of just adding that block in now. Right. Um, but yeah, I think that that that's uh, you know very much clarifies what you need now, and it's closer to what we can do for you now. And could, then once could we, we talk have something a little bit more about the Princess B, I think it's not as complicated as maybe you're thinking. Um, okay. The as long as there could be. It doesn't necessarily need to be two admins for one account. Each language should could have their own account on Translate Me. You have one admin, which is the Princess B, and that admin just needs to be able to delegate work. Like, yeah. Um, I don't know how it works now, but you have you have an author and then a bunch of translators. You don't really have a manager yeah. of those translators, how it is now, right? No, no we don't. Yeah. Okay. It's a first so that, come, first serve, the, and the, the but there, there is the author's option to review the manager's profile and say yes or no. Um, but yeah, we need to in, we need to ins, in, ins, insert the princess B at that deciding point. Correct. Correct. Okay. okay. So it's still it's like that's a, that's a legit extra feature that we need. It is an extra feature, but but it's not it's not terribly huge for now that I'm thinking about it. It's it's actually about because we've got a we've got a flow that says if you're in, if you if you're doing French, you see all the French jobs, and if you're a translator, you get to see the French jobs. So there must be a, a sort of middle piece that says not only is it French, it just can't be for everyone. Right. There must be a way to to select. <laughs> Sorry, um, it gets worse than that. <laughs> and there must be a way to select the um, the translators that are going to be able to see this job. So right. <laughs> I'll speak to my team about that. Okay, great. I have something I want to interject. Um, I was uh, moving into the future a little bit and pretending to be a, a YouTube account owner that would upload SRT files. And in the interface, <laughs> One of the things I don't know we're uh, aware of or thinking about is uh, I don't I don't know if I can share my screen to show you real quick. I can yeah, just... hold on. Let me let me give you the the access. Yeah, I'll just stop mine there. I need to reclaim the host and then give it to Doug. All right, Doug, you should be good to share. Okay, so I just wanted uh, I just wanted to run through this. So, uh, oops. Okay, can you see my screen here? Yes. Okay, so just so you know, uh, if you go back here, these are this is my channel that I've been playing around with, and I was trying to max out my videos and just experimenting with different languages. And this one right here is uh, when you normally get a video, you don't have this line, right? You just get this automatic captioning. And my experience is if you don't duplicate this line and create this row, you will have problems um, because uh, what happens is uh, it starts 
it doesn't recognize this uh, automatic thing properly. I don't really know. It basically, I, I realize that you need to have it like this. You know, like if you look at all my other videos here. Um, yeah, that, that's yeah, the I problem. always have it like uh, this. And the reason if it's not like that, the English will show another captions. It'll show some foreign language. It just defaults because it doesn't have a dedicated row. The other thing I found out is if you go here, and we go to uh, wait, wait. Can you stop? Can you stop before you go on to the next thing? Sure. It, um, so when you, I just want to reiterate, when you first upload a YouTube video, you're gonna have one row that says English it automatic. Looks, right, and that's it. And but there's an option to duplicate and edit. Correct. And you're saying you yes. must duplicate and edit before you upload other languages. Is that correct? Uh, you could do it either way, but if it's not duplicated and edited, it's going to be a problem because it's almost like the English, um, the, when, when every time I added languages and I did not duplicate and edit that row, my English would show captions in a foreign language. Your English. Okay. So let me just, have. let me just say something here, guys. Okay. This is the, th the problem with, with YouTube is that this, it, it has a feature. And then all of a sudden the features disappeared if you go down the wrong uh, branch of uploading this video. So this is why we've got to condense that video that I shared now on Telegram and really identify uh, specifically how the author must do this. And and Doug's right, if you don't duplicate and edit this file sort of at the point where you, you're uploading the file, you lose that ability. It, it disappears. So all my past videos, I can't get the English file. I have to manually upload an English file. So this automatic English file is is it's, it's YouTube saying, hey, here's a, here's a quick start. Then you've got to duplicate it because the purpose of duplicating is because it's not perfect. And that's what, what Doug's saying. You get it then an English version and it's edited. But once you've got that, uh, then you can export that. So, so the duplicated it, is for the custom upload SRT file for English. It's for you to have a shortcut version in machine for you then to edit on YouTube. But the thing that, that you need to have that is you need it uh, automated. And you miss out on the automated step if you upload the video incorrectly. And then you can't go back and get the automated step. You've got to add it manually. And that's the part that we want to avoid to you know avoid building our little uh, URL did extraction you go over that, or using Ryan, third party. In, sorry, in the nine-minute video, did, did you cover that, what you just talked about now? Yes. Okay. I, I did it quickly. We need to condense that nine-minute video. So I'll do another one. Um, but yes, it's in there. Okay. That's just very long. what I'm doing now. Yeah. Okay. See now, I just added Chinese simplified. You see that? Yeah. I have two yeah. rows. If yeah. I if this is this is e uh, see I can upload a file here. That's easy enough. Okay. I'm assuming it'll just we could just let Ola load our SRT. There's also now this is available, which is the uh, auto translate. So. Instead of going to the front end and auto translating, you can go to the back end and make it permanent so that, but I don't know what the quality of this translation is, obviously. And then the it's, other pretty, thing, it's pretty good. Yes. Um, it's machine yes. translated. Look at this. We forgot the, the title and description. I didn't put a description in here, but there's no, there's no way to auto translate in this end. And we have to now also consider these data fields for the uh, video translation. Oh, uh, yes, that's a good point. I'm going to add that actually, that there's two files. There's another file that is not an SRT file. It's the, um, let me write it down. It's basically the intro. Yeah. yeah, intro and But it's not a file. You just have to copy paste. Think, yeah, it'll be a copy and paste yeah. probably. I, I mean, think, there's not a think, file uploadable way. I, I just think there's a question mark there. We need to go and see, okay, if the author gets his SRT file, how does he translate intro and description? I'm just saying we need to check that. I've just put it on the file, okay. okay. Well, and you know what I'm wondering too is maybe another question I, I'm not convinced about is I like the fact that YouTube provides us the automatic text caption version, but should we even rely on it? And is there a better way and a cleaner, like a better translation with diarization and speakers? But then you're getting into costs, you know, because all right. those ways cost something you know and so i, I looked i looked at deep Graham, doug i looked i i did some tests and it wasn't significantly better than youtube it was okay not. well see i didn't know i just all i can go is by what i read but i trust ryan's you know he's 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 way more into this than i am i'm just having fun reading and <laughs> learning new stuff yeah 
So for now, we're gonna we're gonna focus on leveraging what Google does, uh, what YouTube does for us. Let's yeah. use as much as that. And, and I agree. I agree. And, and then and then we'll add features that that we that we absolutely need as you know as priority, and then build on the wants and the you know those those parts of of what we're doing. We need to focus on what's needed right now. <clears throat> but this is this is like kind of annoying that the author has to watch a video and do these weird steps to get us to set up correctly. I mean, it's just kind of shitty on YouTube's it, part. It, it is, but at the same time, the service that normally deals with this is paid for. You've got to pay for it. And I don't know if they've done it on purpose or their new studio is just like, like not fun anymore to use, but um, it, certainly, it certainly used to be easy. If you watch the tutorials on how to do it two years ago, you go, you upload the file, you can go back, you can add the automated, you can use the automation, you don't have to use it, you can use the auto translate. It was easy. Whereas now you follow that that tutorial and those buttons don't exist, those steps don't exist. Yeah, so it's like, it's, it, you know what it seems to me? It's like they've built more complexity into YouTube Studio, there's bugs in the code and you just have to maybe. do weird workarounds just because there's, <laughs> there's bugs in the code. Yeah. That's that's what I found on my, that's why my video was nine minutes instead of like two minutes of this is how you do it. Wow, um, that's unbelievable. But, but we've got a lot to work with. We've got a lot to work with. I mean, the fact that it's auto English that's that's a that's a nice little starting point. Um, yeah, we just need to funnel it and make it efficient to get it done for for the translation side. Cool. Um, <laughs> yeah, we've, we've been going for a little while. I think. I think Ryan yeah. needs to get some rest. Yeah. Get better. Very good. I do have my dinner waiting for me. So yeah, I think I think I've got a lot more though, Jesse, from this call. Um, and I'm just gonna tweak this diagram and I'm gonna send you that version. And then you're welcome to save it on your computer, but you use it online. And I'll uh, it's nice to just be able to look at this and actually read it. Whereas a PDF's a bit hard to make some changes or notes on the same file. Right. So um so I'll get that to you tomorrow. And then I'll have a chat with my team also just on on these on where we at with just focusing on on this. Okay. Cool. Thanks, guys. All right. Good. Thanks. Thanks very much. We'll chat right. soon. Cheers. Bye. 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 Bye.